Hey guys, Tim here, Big Dog Forge. Welcome back to the shop. So uh, I was reading through the comments on the channel this morning and I ran into one and someone had asked if you could take chain and cable and plates and make Damascus. And I had not heard of that being done before, all at one time anyway. And uh, I thought we'd give it a shot, see how that came out. It sounds like fun, sounds like a challenge, and uh, well, it's the worst that can happen. We end up breaking something. We've done that before. Anyway, um, so let's just jump into it and see what happens here. We're going to give it a shot. Stick with me. It should be fun. Let's we'll see how it goes. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in a bit. Bye. All right, guys. We're going to grab some stuff out of the junk pile right here behind my propane tank. We got a piece of cable. I picked up Floyd equipment. We got an old file, probably from work. And we've got some 15 and 20, courtesy of my buddy Corey at the bandsaw manufacturing plant. And we got some metal cutting bandsaw blades from Derek Lanhart. Thank you, Derek. Appreciate that. And a piece of forklift chain from Jason Nichols. He sent to me quite some time ago. We get it safely tucked down there in the scrap pile. All right, here we go. So, chain, cable, some plates, and I'm going to start cutting this stuff up. And I'm going to use an abrasive saw here to cut this stuff with. And we're going to have quite a bit of prep work to do to everything, which is going to be a good portion of what we're doing here. Now, this is a piece of motorcycle chain that we've made Damascus out of before. And this is our forklift chain. And they seem to be made out of pretty much the same thing. So we're gonna get that forklift chain soaking in some uh, acetone. See if we can break up some of that grease while we prep up this piece of cable. And I'm just gonna weld around the outside of the opposite end there. That should contain all the little uh, strands while I cut this guy off to length. I should really get myself a real abrasive saw instead of that thing, but man, it works pretty good. Alright, and we're going to cut up our pieces of 15 and 20 wood band saw blade. And then we'll cut up our metal cutting bandsaw blade to the same lengths so we can stack a regular billet you can see those laying there and of course we gotta clean all these guys up so they'll lay nice and flat and get all the scale and that kind of stuff off so I think we're gonna call this junk pile Damascus or scrap pile Damascus something like that it's a pretty good challenge. You guys should go through your scrap pile, see what you can find, and make some Damascus out of it and see what it comes out like. Send me some pictures. All right, weld a handle on the end of the cable here, and we're going to get that into the forge. Going to burn off some of the grease. It's got oil and grease and stuff on it. And we're going to pull a trick on this thing here a little bit. What we're going to do, stand it up, and hit the handle on the end and open that up and we're gonna flux it and we're not gonna weld it together here that needs to be done when we're putting our billet together we're gonna close this back up with that flux inside flux it a little more and we're just getting this as compact as we can because we're not going to be able to do that once it's incorporated into the billet it's simply gonna smash down flat and uh, I don't want any of those strands busting loose on the side. All right, a little flux on there. Set that guy aside to cool. And then we've got our file that we chose. And we're gonna anneal that. While that's cooling off, we're gonna take just the top layer of flux off this thing. And we're going to knock the teeth off that file now that it's cool. 
a lot of prep for a lot of these different parts and pieces. And I want to make sure that they all weld up as best as possible first go around. Getting all these different round and odd shaped surfaces to weld to one another is going to be a little bit of a trick. Alright, we're going to cut our file off at the right length to match the wood cutting and metal cutting bandsaw blade parts. And we're going to stack all this stuff up to make our regular Damascus billet. Now the reason we've got a file on there is these pieces are rather thin and I want to keep them rigid so they don't start flexing and bowing in the um, forge. And it'll give us a sort of a cutting edge on that side of the billet it should we decide to make a knife out of this. Get all this stacked in there. And we ended up with I think nine layers of 15 and 20 and eight layers of uh, metal cutting bandsaw blade. And then we're just going to weld the corners on this guy. They don't want to put any uh, weld inclusions into the side of this. Yeah, no. All right, let me get this guy peeled out of here. And there we go. That's our regular plate billet. This is our chain. And we're going to fold it just like that. And where are we going to stack this? I'm thinking now, I want that chain on the outside so I can hit it directly and that cable is just going to have to flatten out between the billet and the chain. So we'll get through welding this thing up really quickly. It was a little bit difficult to line up but I went through a big long process to get this welded together and make it straight enough it wouldn't sort of fall over When I started hitting it with a hammer or fold in half sideways so it took a little bit but we got there it wasn't too bad and then of course I welded that on both ends and we get it in the vise clamp it down just so we can keep it nice and straight there we go and we tack the chain in a couple of places in the middle to keep it nice and rigid. So we got chain, cable, and our stacked billet. And this is our borax mixed with alcohol. And that'll get in between all those little chain pieces and uh, flux everything up real nice for us. The alcohol will burn off in the fire, leaving borax and all the little cracks and crevices on the inside. All right, I get some flux on the rest of this. Get this guy up to temperature. And we're going to go ahead and do this in regular time. So you can see all we're doing is just tacking this together. We're going to work this thing down slowly. We're going to take it easy on it so nothing comes apart. And we're going to compress everything and fill all those voids and gaps. And we'll take several heats to do this. Just like that. You don't have to hit it super fast like you're in fast forward. And you don't have to hit it really hard. You got plenty of time. You got your temperature up. Relax. Take it easy. Alright, now we'll speed things up. I actually welded this thing this way about four times but I only showed you twice here before we headed off to the power hammer this video was getting long enough as it is alright keep fluxing it up we want to keep flux on it the entire time until we can fill all those voids in it was at this point I realized that uh, those big hammers under there kind of took some of the throw away from Scrappy. Now that billet's um, about four and a half inches wide at the moment, but we may change the hammer configuration a little. 
Okay, so you guys are going to get to watch me uh, forge this thing out under Scrappy and uh, using Floyd. And while that's happening, you can watch that. And we're going to talk about a little giveaway. So if you made it this far through the video, what I want you to do is I want you to comment on the video. And somewhere in your comment, put the word skull. As in brain pan, skull. And what I'm going to do is a giveaway. And we're going to give three of the skull bottle openers away. And we'll do a random pick with a random name gem generator. A random number generator using the word skull as a search. So make sure you put skull in your comment somewhere in there. And uh, we'll pick three lucky winners. And that drawing will be, yeah, we'll make it during the next video. And that video should be out by December 2nd, if not sooner. We'll see how things go. Uh, company Christmas parties and things like that coming up, so we'll see. Anyway, we worked this guy down to a three-quarter inch thick. And we made him about two and a quarter inches wide at this point. And we're just kind of smoothing everything out here, plenishing it. And I can see several areas where there's sort of a cold shuts in there. And it um, looks like maybe cracks, things like that. But not too worried about it. Okay, so what we're going to do is cut off about three and a half inches of the end of this thing. Where you, you, know, you get an uneven billet and things don't quite line up. And it seems to have uh, a few issues. You'll see them here. And it's got what looks like maybe some cracks in it. And uh, there's a little void in the back where the chains came together, that kind of thing. We're going to weld a handle on this thing. And we're going to get it under the press. And we're going to take it down to a half inch thick. And we're going to narrow it up to an inch and a half wide. And we're going to do that at temperature and see if we can work some of those things out or see if it's truly cracked. Now I don't expect much out of this particular piece because it is from sort of the, the throwaway end of the billet. But we'll see what happens and see how how much of that is just surface and how much or how many problems we actually have in the billet so this should give us a good good idea if it's worth drawing the rest of it out into some usable thing and by the way I won't be mentioning the uh, giveaway anywhere else just in the middle of this video so if you watch the video and caught that then you can enter yourself all right okay there we go we're gonna grind the surface of this thing all the way around get that scale off and then we'll get it over to the belt sander and we'll uh, smooth it out we're not gonna go too far with it probably I don't know, 120 grit something like that clean it up a little bit just so that we can see the pattern in this thing. I'm not sure how much contrast we're going to get. Um, the cable should give us some, but I'm not sure about the um, forklift chain. It's not like a motorcycle chain. It doesn't have rollers in it, which are you know higher in chromium, that kind of thing. So I'm not really sure if that's just going to come out looking like one chunk of metal or if it should reveal something else, but we'll see. All right, I'll put a quick etch on this thing, left it in for around 20 minutes, and well, it looks like we can see something in that chain. Let me get this thing cleaned up a little bit and we'll take a little closer look at it. Have some steel wool over it and here's what we get. So this is the very end. It's all gnarled up where everything came together and the cable squished out. But you can see that chain. 
and the little silver lines are where the chain links I kind of ground through them and you can see those links on the edge and the layers of chain and you can see our cable in there it uh, came out pretty good actually and then just above that that's our regular layered Damascus and surprisingly there's no cracks in this and there's no voids and it looked actually looks pretty good to me and this particular piece I think we might be able to do something with it along with the rest of this so all right let's head back to the office and we'll talk about it a little more all right guys there you go it was a little bit of a challenge but hey we made it through it you saw this guy and you can't see any details in here the light kind of sucks but anyway that was our end clipping and the reason we clipped that off and did that explain this a little bit but uh we got some cold in there and on the surface and uh, i wanted to see if i could work those out see if we could uh refine it down a little bit and uh, end up with no cracks i can it worked i'm happy i think we're going to build something out of that not quite sure what yet maybe you guys could leave some suggestions in the comments that would be cool and uh see what you come up with so anyway thanks for sticking with me guys uh if you like what you saw a little like button there and uh that would be cool helps out the little channel quite a bit um thanks to all the patreon guys thanks to all the subscribers all you new guys who have subscribed that's just super cool really really appreciate it we're gonna call it good this time around guys thanks for uh, sticking with me through this crazy thing we'll talk to you soon take care and be safe we'll see you next time bye bye now